So just like non-uniform memory access, parity and ECC memory are things that you'll often find in enterprise-grade server equipment. OK, so before we can understand parity and ECC memory, we first need to know why we need them, right? We need to know what problem they're supposed to solve. And in order to illustrate that, I've got a really simple example. So let's say we have got a, uh, a computer that is very, very basic. So it has a, a single CPU that is connected to a bunch of random access memory, and that random access memory consists out of only four bytes to keep things simple. OK. And at some point, so you can see that these bytes are empty right now. They're all set to zero. There's nothing in the memory for some reason. Then, at some point, the CPU is going to load a character, the lowercase a, into one of the bytes of the memory, just like that. OK, so far, so good. Now, normally, um, this data would just stay in the memory, and then later on, the CPU would be able to get it from the memory again. Right, it doesn't really matter what the CPU does with that data for now. Um, the point is, normally it would just stay there and the CPU would be able to get it from the memory again later on. But sometimes something goes wrong. Okay, so today a cosmic ray might come in and that cosmic ray hits the memory module inside the computer and that flips around one of the bits in our memory. Actually, it doesn't have to be a cosmic ray. There can be all kinds of things that can cause one of the bits in our memory to be different from what the CPU wants it to be. OK, so now we've got this corrupted data, right? This is no longer the lowercase a. This is now something else. This is not what we want. This is a big problem. And this could make the computer crash in the worst case scenario. Now, although this would be annoying in your desktop computer, it's not the end of the world. Whereas if this happens to your cloud server, it could cost you a fortune, right? So you really don't want this to happen in an important server. And that's why we have things like ECC and parity memory. So first of all, let's take a look at what parity memory does in order to, to solve this problem. So parity memory takes every byte in the memory and adds one extra bit of information to it that we call the parity bit. And here's what that parity bit does. When we load the lowercase a into our memory again, you can see that the lowercase a has three ones in it. And three is an odd number. So therefore the parity bit will be one. If we were to load the letter c into our memory, the c has four ones in it and 4 is an even number, and therefore the parity bit would be 0. Right? So the parity bit tells you if the number of 1s in the data is even or odd. So why would you want to do that? Right? How does this help? Well, when this <laughs> cosmic ray comes in and flips around one of the bits in our lowercase a, the number of 1s is suddenly no longer odd, because it either becomes 4 or it becomes two, which are both even numbers. So when the computer, when the CPU is accessing this byte once again, it will see, hang on a second, there are four ones, so that's an even number, but according to the parity bit, it should actually be an odd number. And then it will immediately know that the data has been corrupted. It's important to realize that Although parity memory is capable of detecting memory corruption in an early stage, it's not able to do anything about it. So it's not able to find out what exactly went wrong and then fix the data. This is why not many people buy normal parity memory anymore, because it's just not that effective. Instead, we often buy ECC memory these days. So ECC stands for Error Correcting Code. Just like a normal parity memory, it stores parity information, so it stores parity bits. But then it is also able to correct the data that is corrupted using a bit of mathematics that we call the Hamming Code. So ECC memory is actually able to say, well, that data right there should have been a lowercase a, and then the lowercase a gets sent to the CPU. That way, 
the programs running on the computer will never even realize that anything went wrong in the memory because the memory actually corrected itself. That's what ECC memory can do and that way it can make sure that the computer will always stay online. So lots of servers these days use this ECC memory. Now you do have to realize about these special kinds of memory is that they're bloody expensive because they're storing all this parity information they're effectively just storing more data so you're effectively buying more memory right that's why they're more expensive also they're made in much smaller quantities which also makes it more expensive and on top of that the motherboards and the cpus that actually support this kind of memory are also really expensive so for the average consumer and not just for the average consumer, even if you're running a small server, I would say ECC memory is just not worth it. It's too expensive. It's only worth it if you have some system that needs to stay online 24 seven at all cost. In that case, ECC memory is something for you. In all other cases, well, nearly all other cases, it will be a waste of money. Well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.